My name is Justin Al from Parking the Mag Division here in Richland, Michigan. Today I will be talking about different end plates for the Isis Marco manifold assembly. So sitting in front of me you have your general assembly for the Isis Marco manifold. You have two manifold slices that have four valves that sit on top of them each. And you have two end plates. You have your right end plate which has your electrical connections and your left end plate which has your pilot ports attached to them. You'll, so your end plates serve two general purposes. They provide your pneumatic and your electrical connections. So let's start off by talking about the pneumatic connections that are on the end plates. So if you look at the bottom of your electrical end plate, you'll notice that there's three different ports. There's a port label number one and two ports label number three. Your number one port allows your main inlet pressure to come in and travel through the openings where your port is sliced in or your galleys and allows the air to travel through your manifold assembly and shift your valves. When that air is ready to be exhausted, it travels back to your electrical end plate and comes out of your two exhaust ports or your two number three ports. This is called a bottom porter version um, of our end plates. We also offer a side porter version, which would have your number one and your number three ports plugged on the side. Now, let's talk about our non-electrical end plate. So on our non-electrical end plate, we have two ports on the outside. We have our external pilot supply port, which is currently plugged. And we have our pilot supply exhaust, which is labeled EX. And our external pilot supply port is labeled PX. Additionally, we have your internal pilot supply port, which is labeled PX as well, on the inside of your electrical end plate. Now, if you're taking advantage of our different gaskets and you're trying to create multiple pressure zones, um, you could exhaust those pressures separately from your main exhaust by unplugging the side of your non-electrical end plate. Now that we've talked about the different pneumatic connections on our end plates, let's talk about the two electrical technologies that you can connect to your end plate so that your manifold valves can respond to a PLC. We offer a 25 pin hard wiring system and we offer different field bus technology products that you can select from. So let's get into the three different product families that we offer for field bus connectivity. The Turk product family allows you to connect to a wide variety of PLCs due to its ability to communicate with a large library of protocols. These protocols are CanOpen, DeviceNet, Profibus, Profinet, Modbus TCP and Ethernet IP. So let's start off by taking a look at our valve driver that's attached to our end plate. There's two different options of um, valve drivers that we have. You have a valve driver that has 16 outputs that fires 16 solenoids on your manifold assembly, or you can order a valve driver that has 32 outputs, which fires 32 solenoids in your manifold assembly. But when you order these valve drivers, they'll always have two slots on them. So if you order one that has six, 16 outputs, you'll have a blanking slot right here. And if you order one that has 32 outputs, you'll have just two cards that both have 16 outputs each. So in this case, I have one card that has 16 outputs and I have a blank card. It is important to note though, when you order your uh, valve driver attached to your end plate, you need to order your communication module separately. And we have different communication modules based off what type of protocol you're using. Also, if you have any devices connected to your system, you can order uh, these additional IOs um, that are used to connect those devices. So the IOs will go in between your valve driver and your communication module when you assemble them together. And your communication module will always be on the outside of your assembly. So let's actually uh, attach our communication module to our valve driver. So the first thing I want to do is I want to unscrew my output card, our output slot. So I'll unfasten these. And now once the screws are up, I'm going to want to pull this out to um, unattach the electrical connection and you can pull with a little bit of effort 
And if you look at the inside, right up underneath where the output slot was, you'll see two screws. Um, I'm going to screw this down to the communication module, but also the valve driver has uh, these receiver slots where you can attach the valve driver to the communication module before you screw it down. So our valve driver is in the connectors for the communication module. And now I'll screw down the screws, our fastened screws, to our communication module that were, that were right up underneath our output slice. And then I'll push the output slice down there with a little bit of effort, make sure that it's down there securely, and I'll fasten my screws that were on my output slice. When I say slicing card, I'm referring to the same thing. So, and that's how you attach your valve driver to your communication module. Now, let's take a look at the second product family that we offer for the field bus connectivity, which is IsisNet. So IsisNet has preferred Rockwell connectivity, which means that Parker IsisNet system can be configured directly in Rockwell RS logic. The different protocols that the IsisNet has is DeviceNet, ControlNet, Ethernet IP, and Profibus. So the components of IsisNet are very similar to Turk in that you have a valve driver attached to the end plate, um, but you only have a 32 solenoid option to choose from. And you have IOs and communication modules that you need to order separately. So let's take a look um, at our valve driver and I actually have a IO address that I have with me and see how you actually assemble them together. So if you look at the bottom of the valve driver, you'll notice that there's slots and then if you look at the uh, side of the IO address, you'll notice that there's receivers. So these slots and receivers fit together and again they're shaped like a puzzle. So you just press down on there until, they're, until they snap into place and that's all you need to do to put the components together for the ISIS net. The Modulflex is the most economical field bus offering available for the ISIS Micro. The protocols for the Modulflex field bus are DeviceNet, CanOpen, Profibus, Aussie, and Interbus S. The valve drive, driver module is available in 16 outputs only. Similar to the Turk and ISIS net, the valve driver module comes shipped with the end plate and the communication module is protocol specific. Where the Modulflex is different is the availability of extra IO modules. Additional IO modules are not available in the Modulflex field bus with the exception of the OSI protocol, which has additional input modules available. So now let's actually put our communication module and attach it to our valve driver that's attached to our end plate. So what we'll do is we'll unscrew the screw that's attached to this yellow piece. And as you can see, the yellow piece on the valve driver for the Modiflex, once you unscrew it, it comes down like a lever. And once you bring that lever down, what you want to do is attach your communication module to your valve driver. And you want to make sure that your pins are aligned with your slots. And it doesn't take a lot of force to join these together. You just got to make sure that everything's aligned up. And now, since my communication module snapped in place with my valve driver, I'll bring the lever up and I'll replace the screw back into position. Make sure that's screwed down tight. And that completes your assembly for the Modiflex.